I have nothing. I think it's working now. I hope so. There we go. You're all right, are you? Yes, fine. How are you? Good. Yeah, not bad. So you were telling me about the uh, the cup. Six months old or? This cup. I wish it was. I'm afraid not. It's um, <laughs> it's nearly three years old. This cup. Oh, oh bless you. Not uh, a day over twenty one, pal. <laughs> no, not a day over twenty one plus uh, value added something or other. A couple of years. A couple of years. Not many. <laughs> Right, just jump straight into it. Firstly, again, thank you very much for, for doing this. It really means a lot. Um, what I'm trying to do is basically build a community for North Wales musicians to a point. Because um, obviously you've got the likes of Chester who have that really strong bond. But with lockdown, we haven't really be, been seeing as much. So mm -hmm. doing this is hoping to start people talking, get people excited to be back out there and doing different things that's what that's what i'm trying to do anyway <laughs> well, that's, good. that's brilliant yeah. yeah thank you so it does look like at the moment it looks like an episode of staged i was thinking that i was thinking that i was like you know what should i should i, I, put a, I yeah should i should i yeah, grow my beard a bit more a bit more michael sheen put on a welsh accent <laughs> have you seen uh have you seen the second season of that yeah just watched the the first one the other night yeah is it as good Oh yeah, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, the, the humour is very, very dry, very yeah. good. Don't Love tell it. me anything. I haven't seen it yet. No, 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 no <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> right. Well, we're just going to jump straight into yourself. How have you found lockdown one, two, and three? <laughs> wow. Yes, quite a question. We're looking at going into the um, what is it, the tenth month now, as um, of of various different types of. Uh, of lockdown if i could just say what what i was doing before and how yeah. it's how it's changed cool. i'm teaching the piano and i have been teaching the piano for decades it seems and um my way of way of teaching was was to uh, sort of i don't have people around at the house i go out to them so you well, i used to uh, i used to go out to people's houses sort of face to face teach it which worked pretty well and it was it seemed to appeal to a lot of people at the time uh, which is why uh, i'm still I was, I was still doing it up until i think it was march the 23rd last year okay, yeah that was when lockdown and yeah and that's right we'd we'd heard all, all about for a few weeks about this um this uh, pandemic that was about to start and uh, frankly i didn't believe it would it would get to our shores i i, I was hoping not yeah. But it seems it did, obviously it did, and uh, they had this lockdown, and then suddenly um, I wasn't able to do what I'd been doing for years and years. Um, and so I, I sort of panicked a bit, and I, I sort of I ca I came away from work for a week. And I, then I'd heard that uh, about people going on, on computers, and I thought, well, I wonder if this, I wonder if this will work. Yeah. And so... I'd heard from other teachers as well, who I know a couple of in the area, and um, they seemed to be using it and it was doing quite well. So I went, I sort of dived straight in and almost like when I first started to teach, um, I knew how to play the piano when I was first started. I got all the qualifications, yeah. how to do things, etc. But actually teaching face to face was uh, a new thing for me back in the day. But I soon got into it and um, uh, I think uh, people are when when people are generally uh, born teachers anyway i mean we try to teach youngsters don't we uh, if we get youngsters we try to teach them not to do this to do that not to say this not to say that but uh, i think that um, once i had uh, gone into this sort of lockdown and sort of died straight in to the computer um, i realized that it was quite a good medium to use for me personally yeah. and uh, often found and I'm still finding that uh, when the uh, the kids are sort of looking at a screen, yeah. and um, I've I've learned uh, how to phrase things a bit slower because I do tend to talk too quickly. I've noticed. <laughs> I, I'm I'm exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. So I sort of wait for answers, like there, for instance, or where I will, you know, sort of take take my time, and it seems to work better. And the kids seem to be. Well, their attention span is better when there's a screen in front of them. 
when they're when they're being taught. So it seems it seems to work very very well. And actually, I'm as I'm quite I'm really quite busy at the moment, so I'm quite really? uh, quite happy about that. But it's it's meant that I don't use my car as much. Uh, I haven't done, hardly done any miles anywhere. Yeah. Um, and it's it's sort of I would say it's a bit harder to to work from a computer as well because when I was teaching before house to house I'd go somewhere for half an hour then I'd jump in the car for 10 minutes and go somewhere else for a half an hour yeah. and so there was always that break on the computer uh, there doesn't seem to be one it's almost like the lessons come one after another and at the end of the night I'm sort of really quite um, well it sort of wears me out a little bit yeah no, I get that when um, when everything sort of goes to a normal ish do you think you'd be carrying on with um the Zoom lessons, or would you prefer to get back out there again? Well, I would prefer to get back out there, of course, and I've, I've lost uh, a day, uh, a day's work a week, really. This is what it's uh, uh, amounting to. I can't really work um, on a Monday, but I'm keeping the Mondays open because obviously I want to get back to them. Yeah. Um, so that's that's quite a big, a big hit to take. But I will still use the computer uh, for people because I've gained new students oh, brilliant. Uh, through advertising and different uh, social media platforms uh, and word of mouth and I've never even met them uh, I just see them on the computer and yeah. uh, it's it still works quite well and uh, you know it's, it's quite good brilliant brilliant well mm. something that I've wanted to know as well what got you into music what first made you put your hands on those keys Right. Well, this is a long story, but I'll, I'll make it short. I'll make it short. I promise. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must have been seven or eight years old. And uh, my mother got a piano for the house. And this is way back. So this is uh, a long, long time ago. As, as coincidence would have it, the piano itself was actually uh, made by a company called uh, Kramer Pianos spelt the same oh, and everything and really? so that, that i think that's the reason they bought it because they like the name <laughs> <laughs> anyway it, it appeared in the house and um strangely enough as a seven or eight year old i'd be legging it around the house on my bike up and down that side whatever playing cowboys and indians whatever and then i'd see this piano and i thought mm. well i like the sound of that tune that's on the tv and it just happened to be um it was, I can't remember which one came first, a bit like a chicken and egg, this one. It was either God Save the Queen okay. or the theme tune to a, a, a police TV show at the time, way back in the 60s, but it was called Zed Cars. Okay. And if anyone supports the Everton football team, they'll know this particular tune because that's what they, it's their sort of theme tune. It's the theme tune to Zed Cars, and I just went and found it. Uh, on the piano so uh, they knew at an early age that I could play by ear but to me that was that was just normal and it and it, and it was for, for years and years you know why can't anybody else do this or yeah. if somebody can't do it I can't understand why uh, I, I don't have a problem with that now because I do understand why they why they are not able to and why they are able to it's uh, it's quite fascinating so that's what started me playing by ear and Brilliant. God save the Queen and the theme to Z cars there we are Fantastic. After that, they sent me for lessons, and I've uh, I've been going ever since. So I'm extremely grateful to my parents, who are sadly no longer with us. But if it wasn't for for them, I wouldn't be doing this right now, right here. <laughs> well, would you say that they, your parents, were your inspiration, or did you find inspiration from elsewhere, like a certain pianist or someone? All oh, right. Um, well, I loved listening to um, sort of rock and roll music. And I especially liked it when there was a piano on there. Jerry Lee Lewis springs to mind. Uh, and now, of course, we have Jules Holland. And uh, so every time he's on, I try and watch him. Uh, I can watch videos of him. And uh, dare I say, I try to play a bit like him. So, um, <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and it, well, it's the kind of music I love, uh, really. Yeah. And... Uh, Get me a nice loud piano with some easy action on it and I'm away. You know, that's it. I could sit there for two or three hours, really. I'm just playing improvisation, boogie-woogie piano. And uh, that's that's it. It's sort of part of me now. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. That's brilliant. Well, 
I know you write your own music because I've obviously recorded you in a yeah. elsewhere. Have you written anything since? Have you got any more uh, tunes that uh, you're annoying Vicky with yet? <laughs> Yes, it's so annoying Brilliant. for her. I'm I'm in a cupboard upstairs. It sort of opens out, and uh, I'm in there. So that's I get the headphones on, and I can I can play to my heart's content. Yeah. Right. Um, well, new new stuff. I haven't really come up with any brand new stuff for about a year and a half, maybe something like that. Okay. Uh, and I've got uh, various ways of recording things. Obviously, not as good as a regular studio like yourself, but. Uh, for me, if if I can get it down on some kind of um, digital thing, then I can I can download it to the computer and I can I can have it then because if I don't record it, um, it just sort of disappears and uh, I have to have a way of recording it which I've got now which is terrific. So about a year, year and a half maybe I wrote yeah. the last stuff and it can it can happen all, almost um, accident accidentally I've found. Yes, I've got uh, a Kawhi and Roland up there, so I can go there and I can put the headphones on if I put a, a, a nice sort of piano pad sound on, which is piano plus strings, which I use a lot. Yeah, It's such a, such a nice sound to use, and I can get a lot of inspiration just from just that sound. And I can play chords and, uh, and groups of notes together that I haven't played before. Brilliant. Just out of nowhere, yeah. And uh, some, sometimes it's it sounds okay, and I think, oh, I'll record that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that that's basically what I do. And then, of course, I'm I'm playing other songs as well, which I put up on uh, on YouTube. Yeah, that's fantastic. Where can people find you on YouTube? Um, well, this is where my sort of technical knowledge goes out the window, really. If you just type my name in, it'll it'll it should just come up. I hope. Yeah. Fantastic, not a problem. Um, now, I know you've done shows in the past, been part of bands. Um, uh, did you say you've toured a little bit as well? Um, I wouldn't call it a, a tour. It was uh, just, uh, I think uh, at the time, the, the group I was in, with the setup, they hired theatres and things like that. And uh, we went and did a few gigs. This is way back in the 70s. Yeah, this is uh, way way back. Well, it was only happened about three times, so yeah. But we hired a massive PA and a huge light system, and uh, yeah, oh, it was quite interesting. Yeah, have you got any stories that you can share that PG? Uh, PG. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm sure there are. Yeah, I'm sure there are. <laughs> Don't incriminate yourself. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. Um, I think we um, we did um, we did a gig in the Gateway Theatre in Chester a long time ago. Okay. And in that uh, gig, it would be I had a Hammond organ at the time and a, a rather bad uh, Krumah piano, which was not very good at all. But anyway, I had this Hammond organ, and, and uh, when we did the show, the uh, the safety curtain would be down, which is about a foot thick and solid, solid as a rock. So yeah. that, that's a fire cut. Then, and we filled the stage up with uh, dry ice. And as the stage was lifting, uh, sorry, as the curtain was lifting, um, all the ice would then spill out into the auditorium. And at the same time as the curtain going up, we'd have the music from the TARDIS on Doctor Who taking off. So you can Brilliant. imagine this curtain going up. And this sound getting louder and louder through the through the 2000 watt PA, whatever it was, um, to which the lights would then beam onto me like this. And uh, I, I, I I had a cape on, <laughs> like a big <laughs> black cape. <laughs> Have you still got it? And that, actually, we, I had it until about five years ago. It's uh, it's disappeared now. I think I think we used it for something else. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, so as this was going up, the lights sort of came on. Then I started with uh, Bach's, Bach's Toccata, which, of course, is the, uh, the uh, like the mysterious music on a horror movie. Yeah. da 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 this one. Yeah. I can't believe I just sang out a few notes there. M maybe you can make that sound better in your marvellous... Uh, <laughs> Sounded perfect to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 
So I did about a couple of pages of that and we uh, organised for the, the group to come in on, the rest of the group to come in on a couple of chords that I'd sort of put in there. And then ah. we went into one of our one of our songs and uh, it, seem, it seemed to work okay. Yeah. Uh, except one, one of the gigs, uh, I think the lights failed. And uh, yeah, we were in complete darkness. I was fine because I, I could see just about what I was yeah. doing. But uh, we carried on anyway. And we all we saw was these shadowy figures running around with torches trying to find the problem. And then eventually the, the lights came back on. Oh, right. mm. I've got to ask two questions. Firstly, did the rest of the band wear capes? Uh, no, they only let me wear one for some reason. Maybe, maybe I was <laughs> just daft enough to wear the cape. I don't know. Fair enough. I didn't wear a wig or anything. I could have, I could have no. had a wig on as well, couldn't I? And, could and have. No one, no one would have recognised me. <laughs> <laughs> have you got any photos anywhere? I haven't actually. No, oh. I don't think there are any. No. Oh, I would love to have seen that. <laughs> I know. These days, of course, everything would be recorded in, in full HD, wouldn't it? Yeah. Where, where did the cape idea come from? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure about that. I can't remember whether it was my idea or someone else's or what, but, but uh, it, just, it just seemed to, to... It even had a red interior and a collar. So it had a metal <laughs> clasp here, and I was sitting up there. I don't know who the heck I thought I was, but there we go. It seemed to work all right. Brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> Obviously, you play piano. Yeah. Um, do you are you artistic in any other ways? So, for example, we've had a couple of people who like to draw. Mm. Does that I something see. interest you, or do you have something well, else that's an outlet? When I was in education, I suppose I was quite good at uh, drawing things, you know, like uh, plants or I don't know TV sets or fireplaces or something like that. Or, but if you know, if if they asked me to draw a person. Or an animal, then, uh, well, no. that was just terrible because the hands would be too big, or the head <laughs> would be too small, or I don't know. It just seemed to be things I could sort of. It's almost like a photographic thing. I could I could copy something, and and draw it just with pencil, not not necessarily paint. No, but he enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought that was quite good. I liked that, and I liked doing that in school. Yeah, have you done it recently at all? Or? I haven't actually. No, I haven't even. Tried uh, to be honest with you, the, the way um, the way uh, our sort of life is now, I, I don't think I've got time. Even no. now, you know, with lockdown, I, I I'm so busy doing other stuff because I do teach every day apart from Mondays. Yeah. But um, and then we're out, either out walking the dog or doing something in the house. So yeah. time time just goes by too quickly to to be able to do something else. No, I get that. I get that completely. Okay, so moving on to something that obviously is allowing us to talk now, the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that the internet has impacted, positively or negatively, on music today? Whether it be new artists or whether it be streaming? Well, I think it's hugely popular uh, medium to use and it's a, it's a very successful medium to use. Um, personally, from a teaching point of view, I haven't uh, advertised uh, for students in a newspaper or a, a paid advert of any kind, really, apart from on social media. And I've found that uh, on social media, I get much more of a response uh, than newspapers. And that's, in, that, in that way, it's helped me. But as far as music is concerned, and like uh, new bands and stuff, I see it's a terrific medium to use for them to get themselves known, actually. Uh, if, For instance, if there was a new band coming up, they were all 16 or 17 or something like that, and they wanted to get their music heard, they could do it instantly. They'd just create a page on Facebook and start putting their music videos on there and share it to as many music-based uh, music uh, groups there are on Facebook. And, um, you know, they could, they could actually get work from it. Yeah. Well, when it's allowed. Yes, <laughs> when, of course. When we're allowed to actually have live music. Gig. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hugely uh, positive about uh, the internet and the different mediums that are, we're able to go on to now and, and listen to and sell music on. I completely agree. 
just going back to a comment you made about like newspapers when i started the guitar tuition i put an ad in i'm not obviously not going to say name but a, a a local newspaper and they put it in the paper and they put it supposedly online for me i paid about um how much did i pay it was about 60 pound i think it was but it was yeah. going to be 60 pound for four weeks right and after the first week, they said, oh, it goes out to 80,000 people. We've got thousands of people who pick up our newspaper. Um, it'll be amazing. You'll get loads of stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to give it a go for a week. It, it's 60 pound. It's it's a bit of money, but hopefully you get something back from it. Yeah. So I put it in on the Friday. Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday, I thought, you know what? If something's going to happen, it'll be like an ad. It, someone will or drop a message over the weekend, or Monday, maybe. Mm -hmm. Monday came, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, nothing. Mm -hmm. So I was a bit like, okay, I'm going to cancel it. They gave me a call, thankfully, on the Friday and said, do you want to carry on? And I said, no, I haven't haven't had any interest. Nothing's come of it. Thank you for your time, but it's I'm not going to carry on. Went straight to social media, started sharing in... Um, especially when it was coming up to Christmas as well, that North Wales Christmas um, page that we were both on. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it started sharing in there. Um, but to start with, it was just in, because I'm from Buckley, started sharing in Buckley resident groups, um, Buckley town, just everything to do with Buckley. And within an hour, two hours, I had 10 people booked. And this is when I first started, which wow, was... Wow, that's amazing. I know. Whereas compared to something that apparently has 80,000 people going on, yeah, I was just a bit, I was a bit shocked. I was like, wow, okay, so newspapers really, unfortunately, aren't yeah. the way to go anymore. Mm. It is social media, it's the marketing, it's the networking, it's reaching out to people. And I'll tell you something else that I did that I'm not sure if it'd be of, of use to yourself, but I made some leaflets. I went out and I just what I did was I picked new estates in the area. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go around because the new estates, they, when I saw them being built, like there's one that's about a year old, they said three and four bedrooms. So I was thinking, okay, families, younger children, say aged eight or nine, perfect time, in my opinion, to start guitar or an instrument. Yeah. So I went around, posted them. And even from a hundred leaflets, I got three or four people contacted. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it's there's so many different ways. You can't pinpoint one specific way to do things, can you? Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I think the leaflets have the same effect as social media because when you pick up a leaflet that on your on your on your on your doormat, you know, you look straight at it. Yeah. On social media, if you're a member of a, a music group, it comes up as yeah. a notification yeah. and you might look at it for 10 seconds you might look at it for a minute and a half yeah. you might not, not look at it at all but there's more chance of you looking at that than turning to page 35 of the local paper yeah. where most people just well it's like you said it's unfortunate but we don't want to see the papers go of course but not most people i mean we get a local paper and i never even look at the ads in there no no not well for a second no, I know. Well, neither do I. Um, my grandparents, they have um, they have newspapers come in. They have a look. Um, they've gotten stuff down the side from probably a year ago. But they will look at the first few pages, the headlines, the main things, and then not really look at anything else. Maybe the odd Sudoku or something like that, but uh, yeah. nothing else. So looking at things that do benefit, what would you say to a new musician who's trying to get their stuff out, trying to be heard, what would you, with your experience, recommend to them? Um, well, I think I would get them to, obviously, if they're not already on Facebook, which they probably are, is to set up um, a specific page for their music. Okay. And then get all their friends to like their page. And then anyone who visits it, make sure that they like it too. And it's, it's all about liking stuff these days, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so if, if they can get them to like everything that they do, then they can start to put these videos on and uh, to see if people uh, respond to them and, and, and share them far and wide, you know, uh, as far as I mean, you could go all over the world with it, couldn't you? If you yeah. think about it, you could uh, you could have your stuff. Uh, 
either on Facebook or Twitter or any of the others and just put them on every every other day put something different on so people will either get probably you know really interested in, in what's going on with you yeah if they like if they like the stuff or they or they won't so you give them that choice you can like it or not and I think I think it really works I think um, from my point of view it's worked for me it's, uh, it works for my partner's business yeah and uh, if, it, if it wasn't for the internet um, you know we wouldn't be in business I don't think now no no of course I completely agree so just completely forgot what the question was there there we go so <laughs> the <laughs> completely forgot then something that has been coming up that I've been noticing a lot is when yeah you get invited to a page. What's the first thing you would personally do? Um, it depends where it comes from, really. Okay. If it comes from a member of the family, um, I tend to just like them straight off. Yeah. Because I think, well, you know, it's a uh, it's family thing. We've got to support each other, etc. Yeah. But if it's if it's from someone else, then I'll check out the page first to make sure I'm, I'm okay with it. And then uh, if it's something that I like, then of course, I'll uh, I'll subscribe to it. That's and, brilliant. Uh, especially anything music to do yeah. with music, and then I always look at those because uh, and I've done this on 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 YouTube. I've got uh, subscribers on there, and they they always subscribe, and I'm like they like my stuff. So I think well, I'll, it's only fair that I have a look at uh, at theirs. So it's all about networking. I think I think success can come from networking. Yeah. I, even though networking doesn't actually pay any pay anything. Unfortunately, but the more your name is known, the more likely people are to say, well, well, he's offering this. I've heard about this guy. He's doing that or she's doing that. I think I found them on Facebook. I think her name is the name is Susan or John or, or whatever. And then you can find them that way. You just type in those things and up they come. And so yeah. you, you can often get uh, business success out of it. Yeah, no, that's great. The only reason I was asking is because. I've spoken to a couple of people and they've said when they get an invite, because we have these friends on Facebook, for example, I've got 194 friends on Facebook. I can't personally say I've met each one, but I know <laughs> of them. So the point that I was trying to make was even though we've got these friends on Facebook, they could be making a page every two days. You could have a hundred people make a page today for example yeah. send you a link and say please like this well straight away your notifications have just gone through the roof with a load yeah. of different requests so mm -hmm. how would you personally tackle that getting through all those requests would you go onto each page or would you get to a point where it's sort of like okay i've liked this person before i'll do it again or do you just sort of push it aside well, I don't know really. It depends. Like I said, it depends what it is. But if it's if it's music based, then uh, I, w I will obviously look closely at it, yeah, and uh, and and give it a, give it a like if if I think it's uh, if it's worth worth looking at. And and I've done that with several music sites, and uh, I'm able to share my music videos on there sometimes, which is great because I get uh, people looking at YouTube because of it. So in that sense, it works. Yeah. No, fair enough. Fair enough. I do agree. Last question for you then. What are you doing with yourself at the moment? Well, you you... Right now or today? <laughs> Not right now. You're speaking to me. <laughs> um, no, I just mean like going forward with, obviously, if we come out of lockdown, you're going back to teaching. Are you going to just try writing again? Are you going to try to release anything? I'd love to do all of those things, but I'm already teaching. Um, I'm using the internet later on. Um, yeah, six or seven. So, so I'm already teaching. So, um, what I'm trying to do is the the keyboards upstairs. I, I I've never played them so much actually, and uh, I'm obviously trying to uh, fix up some music for your particular song. Yes, thank and you. Uh, yeah, which I've had a good go at yesterday. Actually, I played it about uh, ten or fifteen times, something like that. So oh, I think well. I'm getting there with it. Yeah, but obviously I want to. And this is what what else I want to do. The the videos I got on YouTube are live. It's almost like I I, I haven't got anything recorded on that. I'm playing them, playing yeah. the keyboards as you would hear them. Um, so what I want to do is I want to step that up really and have those songs 
maybe possibly layered into uh, better uh, better songs. They're very famous songs. I don't want to mention any in case uh, it's an infringement because <laughs> you've got to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I'd like to step up with those and, and make them a better sort of recording so that, well, I don't know. It's, it's like an ambition thing, really. I was thinking, well, you know, maybe I could have an album <laughs> of okay. me playing certain songs and uh, I believe what you've got to do, you have to get in touch with publishers and get their permission. And as long as you pay them, then that's fine. But um, this, is something actually... I, this is something I want to want to explore in the next year. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. We just mentioned then about getting in touch with publishers. I use something called DistroKid. And it's a website to basically go out to Spotify, Amazon, everywhere. Oh, yeah. And you can have a covers option where they will... I think it's about £12 per song. Yeah. But they will get in touch with the publisher. They will say, look, they've paid their, their fee to use the song. Yeah. Um, but then you've got no issues with doing, we can say, it, uh, the Eagles Hotel California, for example. What a great song. Yeah. And uh, haven't you just done a cover of it? I have, yes. Have you? Oh, really? <laughs> Funny how you know that. <laughs> I mean, <Yeah. laughs> uh, where, where would I be able to find this if I wanted to watch it? <laughs> Well, um, well, um, let me see. You could find that on my Facebook page, I suppose. Okay. Um, but I have been able to put a title on that one. No. Ah, they, they did get in touch. Yeah. Not I, th I think it's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I I know. It would have been nice if yeah. uh, Joe Walsh had been on the phone. That would have been okay. I'd have said, hey, Joe, whatever you say, no problem. <laughs> yeah. By the way, can I play keys for you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that would have been a good question. Yeah. <laughs> no, as I say, cheers so much for doing this, Patrick. It, it really means a lot. Um, yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, now, we've, I'm not sure about yourself, but I've had a little bit of snow in Buckley today whilst, uh, whilst we've been... Oh, recording. really? Yeah, it's been no, quite none nice. here. No? no? None up here. No. no. Well, uh, by the time this goes out, it'll be March. So, uh, I don't know, could be in a lockdown tier seven by then. Tier seven, yeah. The police will be on the streets. So will the army. Oh yeah. Uh, let me yeah. see what else. What else might happen? Have you no, ever so seen? Not, uh, not go there. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen the Simpsons movie? I don't think so. No. Ah right. Well, um, basically, to stop pollution in yeah. Springfield, where the Simpsons live, what the government did was put a huge dome over the top of where they lived, and then I've got a feeling that might be the next step. What a great idea! Bit like the Truman Show. Yes. yes. Now that's that a good film. Okay. <laughs> Old man living there. I like that estate he was on. It was nice, you. wasn't it? It was, it was nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, thank you so much for this. It does mean a lot. Oh, it's a real pleasure, Dan. And uh, good luck to you in your new studio. And I hope it uh, hope it goes well for you. Thank you very much, pal. All right. Have a great no day. Problem. And you. Cheers. Take care, Patrick. See you. Bye bye now. <laughs>